I'll never forget when I first laid eyes on Nerevar's second incarnation. He had just thrust open the squeaky Dwemer doors of my mountain fortress to proclaim himself, and boy did he ever make it pop. His pizzazz was unmatched in all of Vardenfell, Telvanni robes over an elegant ebony cuirass, an ordinator helm glowing with the tinny sheen of at least a dozen marks of magic, the tools of Kagranak clasped purposefully in each hand. I was impressed, and honestly only a little scared. I feel it would be unkind to say he may well have been more fashionable than his original, but I couldn't shake the feeling. He boldly barked that he was there to fulfill the prophecy, but I could tell by the wavering way he honked out the words tribunal and temple that he was really just as nervous as I was. I offered him some sujama, and we sat down for a while to talk. I was almost sad that we couldn't really catch up, but he still politely beamed when I regaled him of the good old days of the First Council. Oh, what a joy! After a time, we agreed to just put everything on pause for a while and take some time to visit the country and talk things out Dunmer to Dunmer. I felt that I was making progress and perhaps turning him to my point of view, but also, and I feel silly saying this, but I felt that there was a vague possibility that maybe I was wrong, and that maybe I could still be accepted into Dunmeri culture with his help. Foolish, I know. In the depth of my heart I knew my purpose was unwavering and that he would have to give or be destroyed, but on those peaceful jaunts through the Ascadian Isles region, I felt as if it could still all come up rosy for the both of us. We walked, talked, and laughed for so long that before we knew it we'd gotten to the very outskirts of Vivek City. He asked if I wanted to stay for tea, and I graciously accepted. How could I turn down the strapping, mirthful smile of an ancient friend's mortal vestige? To my surprise, he led me to the Silt Strider stand. Only moments ago I had been certain we were going to Vivek, but I enjoyed the ride and surveyed the land about me to the subtle bobbing of the old and noble Strider. To my chagrin, I found myself in Aldrun, but as my host beckoned, I figured I could put the locale out of mind for the sake of a nice visit. We were on our way up the main avenue to the big crab that loomed over the place when he turned and called me down one of the side streets to an abysmal little hovel in the unsavory end of town. At that point, I really should have seen the signs. Aldrun, a house right next to the broken part of the wall. I mean, honestly, sweet Nerevar, it isn't hard to level up your spackling skill. But it wasn't any of that which churned my heart, no. It was when he opened the door of his puny little pillbug dwelling, and I peered inside to see the messiest collection of worthless trash this side of Periite's own waste bin that I realized just how truly uncouth he really was. It wasn't the sheer mass of the clutter, it wasn't even the stench, it was that the poor carpet, which I swear was something straight out of the second era, had been completely subsumed by the crumbs therein. Not a single shelf had any semblance of being organized, and the traditional redoran pottery that I'm sure came with the place had been stuffed full of old divine intervention spells, half of which bore the unmistakable mark of a Sujama mug stain. I nearly hurled. It was with a tear in my eye that I began casting a litany of drain strength spells. I knew he was probably already over-encumbered, and I felt like such a fool for not seeing it the whole time. I left him there in confusion to ponder how he'd insulted my vanity and pride. But in truth, I wasn't angry. I was simply disappointed to think that Sunder and Keening had probably been stuffed into the middle of that pile for months while he likely went and ran errands for paupers to avoid the prophecy entirely, to avoid me. Oh, how ancillary I felt to my own shadow that day. To think that I was just an unfortunate side quest on this two-bit Nerevar's chase-up House Redoran's ranks. I retreated to Red Mountain to forget about the whole ordeal, and forget I did. Eventually I got over myself, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend it was at all easy. The Battle of Red Mountain was one thing, but this was another. Years later, that same incarnation returned to me in a tattered old noble top and a redoran skirt, plopped the tools of Kagranak on my table, and apologized. I was honestly stunned he was willing to show his face again, but the gesture was nice. We got to talking, and they admitted that the whole prophecy business wasn't really ever their deal to begin with, and you know what, that's totally fair. 
The shackles of destiny are a lot to put on somebody, and I can respect that they just wanted to see the old Vardenfell for a few incarnations before getting serious about coming to this place through fire and war. I told him I get that there are other paths in life far easier and just as fulfilling as any prophecy, and that they could go in peace. It was bittersweet to be sure, but although we parted amicably, I still felt a deep betrayal looming in my spirit from that day on. Since then, every Nerevar that comes through that door has had a 90% chance of being vaporized instantly. That's not an arbitrary figure either. I did a cross-benefit mixed with a spreadsheet on how much more bullshit I was willing to tolerate, and 10% was the number that made it out. Not gonna lie, it's a pretty tough equation on Outlanders and Khajiits in particular. But I'm not wasting my moon and star spiel on a Nerevar who hasn't earned it.